logic was top secret. Two thousand and ten was a pretty exciting year for us. We have a lot of things associated with our UFO investigations. I deal with Roswell. My sister Debbie and I have been going to Roswell since 1999, so we've been working the Roswell case together for about 11 years now. It's always one of the highlights of uh, of our year. I do it every hour, so just to wake everybody up. <laughs> It's always exciting going to Roswell for the festival. There's really no other festival like it um, actually on this planet, probably outside this planet too. One would say that uh, Roswell is really the, the mothership of all festivals. Test, test. And we're off. Aren't you going to introduce me to the weasel? Oh, meet the weasel. <laughs> If you've never been to Roswell, uh, it's a pretty exciting place to be, especially during the 4th of July weekend. There's so many events going on there. But Roswell really is a, known just for the Roswell event in 1947. Actually, um, it's for its cheese. <laughs> There's a big dairy nearby, and they make different types of cheese that you'll see at your local uh, fast food stores. Um, actually, from what I understand, it's harder to get in to the cheese factory to learn about how they process their cheese than it is to find witnesses from Roswell. <laughs> so um, we're talking some top secret stuff that's kind of fun. One of the highlights for the 2010 trip to Roswell was taking the crew from Open Minds Magazine out there. Open Minds Magazine is one of the few magazines, or really probably the only magazine that we have published now out here in the United States that puts a lot of information out about uh, ufology. Flight Sands was picking up blips of, of aerial aircraft flying through here at 2,000 miles an hour. I mean, Chuck Yeager broke the, the, the sound barrier. It was definitely under a thousand miles, yep. <laughs> and, and that's at sea level. It was probably what 600, or probably less than 600, at elevation. So there was something flying out there extremely fast. It gave them more of a of an insight of not only the location, but the area in which uh, you know the event happened. You know, you could talk about this all day, but until you actually go out there and you look at it, you realize that it's pretty desolate, and you're actually standing on, on, on the ground, on the, on the soil, where something came down in 1947, skipped off the ground, and, and left over 300 yards of, you know, alien technology. It's pretty amazing. One of the uh, other highlights, besides going out to the debris site for 2010, was that we actually got a chance to sit down in a nice, quiet area and talk with Jesse Marcel Jr. Um, in 2009, we had him out at the debris site, and there was a lot going on. Of course, um, we didn't really feel uh, it was the right time to sit down and talk to him in in detail about you know how he felt about the 47 incident. He was at that point experiencing uh, and reliving you know what happened to him as a child, and so we kind of just left him alone and let him just kind of you know be by himself and I thought that was probably the better thing to do. It was a unique experience. I've never been out to the crash site before and I didn't realize how rough a country it was. And uh, but to be there on the site was was unique and made me feel well this is where it all started right here. 
We had a, a really nice interview. We asked a lot of the questions that we wanted to ask him that we couldn't last year. As you know, there are those infamous pictures that, that uh, Walt Bon Johnson took of the debris in Remy's office, one including my dad, holding up a very uh, obviously a, a row and radar target. As a matter of fact, one of those pictures had a balloon envelope in the background just to reinforce that this was just a balloon. And the look on my dad's face says, you gotta be kidding me, this is not what I brought here. So they switched the record. And I, because I did see the debris in, in the kitchen floor, so I can say yes, they switched it because that's not what I saw on the floor in Roswell. One thing about Roswell is it's kind of lighthearted. It'll cover um, all the events from the serious side to the not so serious side. You know, they have the parade where people dress up in alien costumes. As a matter of fact, they have an alien costume contest. And then they have the serious side where um, they have the, the really the Hall of Fame of uh, lead investigators associated with Roswell. And we were there this year to see uh, uh, Stad Friedman uh, for one. Um, be inducted into the Hall of Fame. After Staten Friedman was literally abducted into the Hall of Fame, um, Paul Davids was inducted into the Hall of Fame. Uh, ba it's basically for his 1994 uh, film, Roswell. The Roswell incident is really the granddad of all incidents here in the United States. Really, not even the United States, pretty much the world. You know, we have other incidents that occur you know, the Wilshire incident in England and some other incidents from other countries. But they always refer to it as their Roswell. And that's pretty exciting to me because I know that their Roswell is really our Roswell and ours is the biggest and the baddest. And everybody tries to at least not only copy, you know, the events that go on there, but they can never copy the actual event that happened in 1947. It's pretty big. I think what, what really happens at Roswell is besides people coming from all over the world to try and understand what happened in 47. They're also coming from all over the world to tell their own personal stories too. To be with people who had similar events uh, in their lives. To be able to feel comfortable talking with other people there. To be able to see the investigators and talk with them and tell the investigators and the lecturers, their personal stories. They want to be in an area where they feel comfortable. They just can't go anywhere and do this. You just can't go anywhere and start talking about UFOs without feeling somewhat inadequate, to, you know, to, with the person that you're talking with. But you come out to Roswell, it's open season. I always get people come up saying, okay, you're going to think I'm crazy, but this is what happened to me. And it's really funny because, you know, no, number one, I don't think you're crazy. <laughs> Well, I'm the UFO nut, so I guess I would be crazy. But just because you've seen something, just because you don't understand what you saw, or just because you don't understand you know, the event that happened to you, it doesn't make you crazy. It just puts you in the mode of trying to understand and try and learn what happened to you. And coming out to Roswell uh, can actually help. I mean, you can meet with people there that have gone through the same circumstances that you have. And, and I actually have people talk to me every year from from seeing lights in the sky to, to being abducted by aliens to Bigfoot now. So it's, uh, it's pretty interesting and it's always uh, exciting and, and a pleasure to meet people there. I just can't wait to, for next year to, to hear new stories. You know, you see a lot of people around here just kind of going, you know what, maybe, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there was a UFO crash, absolutely, of course there was. Why not? <laughs>